All right, we're at Thermal Tech. They have a lot of new products. My voice is almost gone, so let's go fast. Uh, the V71, a massive modular case here. As you can see, very sleek on the outside uh, window right here. Now, all these hard drive cages are completely removable. So you want, a, you want them out of massive radiator. You can do a 360 right here, 480 in the top. Massive radiator. Come on around to this side here. Um, when, you, when you take out all these hard drive cages, there are still some clips here that you can mount, like two and a half inch or three and a half inch hard drives. And I'll show you on the smaller unit right here. See if we got them mounted there. This is the V41, a little bit smaller. I've just got these going smaller and smaller. Let's go ahead and take a look at the micro uh, ITX version. Tiny little case here. The, the biggest thing for this for me is that the price point is going to be like 50 bucks. Now, here's the deal with this one. It, we've got, you see we have a lot of different acrylic windows right here. Well, out of the box, it comes like this. This one has one acrylic window on top and then two like uh, honeycomb mesh windows on the side. But you can mix and match. You can move this around. They're all the same size. And then when you get on the inside here, we can fit full-size power supplies, 160 millimeter high um, tower cooling solutions, 300 millimeter um, uh, graphics cards. So you can fit a ton into this little case. The front is completely sleek, uh, no optical drive. And over on the side, you've got all your standard ports and everything. It's all hidden from view to keep the front looking nice and sleek. And they're all swappable. Yeah, everything's swappable. You can move these sides around any side you want. Let's take a look at a couple other case mods based upon these. And uh, yeah, I think we've covered just about all of them here. Yeah, this is, this is the V31. It gets smaller again. And as you can see, the insides again, modular cages and everything. Just a lot of different sizes for a lot of different people and a lot of different uses and applications. Let's go check out the mods. Core V71 case mod. Crazy paint job. Let me just lift this right up. That's right. Hydraulic lift on there. <clears throat> this thing's sexy. Two 200 millimeter fans right there in the front. I'm going to spin this thing around so you guys can see the crazy cable management here. That's beyond anything I would ever do. That's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous is what they've done here. But yeah, they did it. Why not? Power supplies. They've got absolutely too many power supplies. Way too many. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at them because they're all gold certified. Um, and we start down here with the tough power line. The tough power line goes from the 750 all the way up to 1500 watts all the way across. Um, and these are all gold certified. And then we have one 1500 watt that's gold certified. And then one that's titanium plus uh, um, certified. That's up to 94%. Now, I don't know what's going on on the inside here. I can't take them apart and look at them. But, um, you know, whenever something's platinum certified, it's usually pretty good. We have some custom cabling here as well. You can get all this. Moving up here, we have the uh, Tough Power DPS line. And we have a ton of these all the way across. And then we have the DPS-G. Now, if I understand correctly, these, these all will allow you to interface with your computer. They've got a USB plug. That's similar to what Corsair has been doing. And now we have NZXT doing this as well. So you can interface with your computer, you can monitor your fan speeds, you can change your fan speeds, you can monitor the temperature, you can even monitor how much you're spending on electricity with the apps. Now, the difference in the G line and the DPS line, the DPS G and the regular DPS line is a box. One of them goes from USB to a box, the other one does not. So there's a separate line for that because one of them is cleaner on the inside. Seems a bit weird. Let's go over and take a look at the software. Here's the software we were talking about. Check out your efficiency, check out how much you're, you're spending, you know. Uh, check out your temperatures and your fan speed. Click on these things, give you more detailed information. You can even go check out your records. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's check out the water cooling units. Okay, now they have a whole line of custom cooling solutions coming out. Custom radiators, take a look in here. We've got thicker radiators, thinner radiators, 180s, 360s, 540s. 540s, let's check out, take a look at that. That is ridiculous. Three. 200 millimeter fans on one radiator and you can mount six because there's three that you can mount on the back as well it's ridiculous okay now some of these they created themselves some of them they work together with swift tech as you can see here we have different pumps different res reservoirs all all available from thermal take different cooling different colors in the cooling the one right here in the uh, the front there with the gold they work together with swift on that one the other two there there's an intel and an amd they developed those themselves all kinds of fittings they're creating their own tubes a different size, I believe it's half inch and quarter or and uh, three-fourths of an inch. I forget the different sizes in the tubes there. Um, and then we have just the standard all-in-one enclosed loops. We have 360 millimeter radiator on the show floor. Not a lot of those out in the world. And then we have a couple um, more models here. We've got, the, of course, the 240. And then we've got two of the uh, 120 millimeter radiators. One is thicker there. And one of the things they told me about their radiators, their radiators are really dense. They're trying to keep them extremely dense so that they do a better job at dissipating the heat. So lots of stuff from Thermal Take going on. Um, I haven't tested any of this stuff yet. Hopefully I'll get some of it to test. And one more thing to note, the, the really, really big radiator, there's no cases 
yet. They have a case they're working on, but so far Thermal Tank doesn't have any cases that will fit a radiator that size. We'll let you know when they do. All right, we're at the OZZ booth with Alex. Alex, thank you very much. How's Thanks it so going? Much for coming. Appreciate it. So, uh, you have the nicest booth I've seen in this entire uh, event so far. We try. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fancy. So, you guys got acquired by Toshiba here. Yep, that's the big news. Uh, ever since February, we're part of the Toshiba group. Yeah, and so now you're using Toshiba memory in all your SSDs, huh? We have completed the transition all the way from SATA all the way to our uh, highest end enterprise drive. Talk to us kind of through your. Uh, your drives now, what are you using? So Vertex uh, is still kind of our, our mainstream line. We sell a lot of Vertexes. Vector is still for the enthusiasts. Uh, we are introducing at the show a new, brand new Vector 180 series. Uh, basically, we found that a lot of our customers are using the Vector drives for kind of entry-level workstations, uh, entry-level server applications. So we're actually taking it to the next level. Um, this brand new drive uses our Barefoot 3 controller, our proprietary firmware, but we've added power flow protection. So it writes all in-flight data in case there's a power loss. So really a true enthusiast product, but also something that people can deploy into a hyperscale data center. So speaking of, you know, you're talking into a, a data center, what kind of uh, write cycles can you do with these things? Yeah, these are rated for about 50 gigs per day. Um, so you go ahead and pound them. Excellent. Very fast. And 100,000 IOPS is uh, pretty good. Talk to us about these uh, PCI Express based oh, yeah. SSDs. Those are impressive. When SATA is not enough, uh, when you basically, we're getting to the point where we're saturating the SATA bus. And, um, in this opportunity uh, with PCIe, we can really get the performance as well as the density really high up on these drives. So you can do 1.8 gigs on a single drive, also do 140,000 IOPS, basically plug in a single card and get RAID 0 performance um, out of a seamless solution. Uh, can you can you put two of these parallel and, and put them in a RAID, like the actual two devices into a parallel absolutely RAID, can, yeah. RAID 0 and increase that? Uh, I'm just drooling on myself. Yeah. You can. You can get pretty crazy with this. Uh, great for content creation or uh, video editing or gaming. Yeah, you can put two of them together. And it's funny you can ask, you ask that. We actually are, have this running live right here. You can kind of see what kind of crazy top-level numbers we can get with two of these. Okay, so you've got uh, what's it, the Crystal Disk Mark here is running, and it says that the, it's, what, 2 gigs a second? And then we've got the, you titled the Addo Disk Benchmark is pointing on this. What is that, 3, three gigs? 3.08 gigs. On read, and then right is, what is that, is that 3.8 right? Almost 4. Wow. For right. For right. right. Pretty insane speeds, yeah, out of two cards. And can so, just this is not yet affordable though, I'm guessing. It's, it's coming down. The price per gig has certainly gotten better. Um, but yeah, this is still a pretty enthusiast level product. But if you want the latest and greatest, uh, definitely this is it. What's, uh, what size are these? These can go up to 960, so basically one terabyte a piece. What about what's the smallest size? Let's say I wanted maximum performance and I want to have the two most affordable ones so that I can run them in RAID. Yeah, what's yeah. the smallest? We can do them down to about 240. 240. 240 gig a piece, yeah. That's pretty good, and yeah. if the price point can get nice and low on that, then we're having some next-gen performance yeah. out there. Absolutely. Amazing. So these are running on what speed PCI Express? Uh, these, these cards are actually Gen 2 by 8 Okay, so we can put these, uh, what's, what's the, I guess that's my, my question, what is the slowest uh, PCI Express slot you can put these in? Pretty much anything that you put a video card in, you can drop one of these guys in. Cool. So, but what the I guess, how uh, when does the, the the PCI Express become a limiting factor in the speed of the drive? So, like, can you do a PCI Express X2 and the drive will still be able to flow through? Yeah, it still actually hit our uh, rated speeds. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So then I could put this in like a six PCI Express system and really go crazy with my RAID oh, control. You, you, yeah, you can get crazy. Now you're talking crazy. Be sure to uh, say thanks to Corsair. That's our sponsor at Computex. So the reason we're here, this is their Hydro Series HD10. It's a bracket so you can mount pretty much any of their water cooling units right on your GPU. And they've got it for several different GPUs and it works for the Intel and AMD. Be sure to check that out in our coverage. Mm -hmm.